Well, good morning, good morning, and happy Friday to you. This is Stella from Better Life, and I hope you guys like our new look. I, I, I had an issue, me and the Lord had a conversation not long ago, and um, I, he kind of, the Lord kind of busted me. I don't know if God has ever busted you, but he busted me because there are so many times the Lord would speak to me and give me insight about things he wanted me to um, to address or speak about or to prophesy or release a word. And so I would have this issue because I would be like, okay, let me run and, you know, let me run and do my hair, run and get my makeup, run. Do. And by the time I did all of that stuff, the anointing would have lifted. And then it was like, okay, what was I going to talk about? And so I was, so the Lord was having a conversation with me about that. And, 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 and you know, I've always loved baseball caps. I've, I've always, I love walking. I love exercising. I love, you know, and so I've always loved just being able to grab a cap, run and go. And so there I am. So anyway, we, we ordered these. We actually had them designed for our community, the Kyle Circle. And later today, they will be available on our, on our website, StellaPayton.com. You'll be able to go online and order you one there are several different designs there is several different colors there is there's the red one there is uh, there is a black one there is I love this one this is one of my favorites there's one of a this one is an olive green it's like a dark dark olive green and then I love vibrance and then there's the yellow I, I mean the orange I told them when I do this one again I wanted them to put the, the lettering would be white like it was on the red one so it'll look more like this I like that white so anyway these are going to be available you'll be able to order them on our website and uh, people ask me what you know I try to find you know you can hardly find anything anything to buy that's not manufactured in china and so i looked for i found one manufacturer from bangladesh but all of the other manufacturers were only from china so some of them if you order you may find one i order it came from china the other one I, i'm going to try to get that and get that line from bangladesh they're really nice quality and they're 30 dollars shipping included we looked for ones that were less expensive but then the quality was so poor and i'm like you know if it's going to have our name on it i want it to at least have a, a nice quality to it so if you like these if you like you one you want to get you one remember what they mean it's not just about this a conversation piece it's not just about wearing a cute cap it's about understanding what this word kyle means and the significance of this word to your life in this hour the word Kail means warrior, it means wealth, and it means wisdom. In this hour, we must tap into all three dimensions of Kail. Number one, in this hour, if you're in the kingdom of God, fighting is not an option. There is a battle coming to you. If you don't, even if you don't go to the battle, soon the battle will be at your doorstep. Some of the battle is walking around knocking on people's doors right now, if you know what I mean. So you have to understand that this. This word means warrior and there are there are standards or or principles of engagement that you have to understand that in this hour as a kingdom agent you must be able to contend in all three realms you have to be able to contend in the spirit you have to be able to understand the battle in the mind and you have to be able to understand the battle in the natural so when you're looking at Kaya when you look at that word and you're looking at the meaning of warrior it means that you have to understand how how to use all of the all of the weapons of your warfare and the scripture says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds now a lot of people don't understand that the strongholds are multi-dimensional too you are a spirit being you possess a soul and your spirit and your soul are housed in this body now as a as a kingdom agent realizing that you are going to have to fight, realizing that you're going to have to be engaged in battle. You must also understand what are the weapons and how those weapons functions in different realms. Now we have this earth realm. And so a lot of people are, are not experiencing the level of self success, myself included, that I know, I believe God wants us to walk in, uh, Oh, wow. Hi, my nephew Gary just reminded me something that my sister's today would have been my sister's 71st birthday. And uh, and and then our mother 
on August 5th would have been 90 years old. Thank you, Gary. And so we just we just stop and, and recognize the influence of those two beautiful people on our lives. I, I tell you what, there was nobody like my mother. Nobody like my mother. And when I anytime I wanted to remember my mother, I would go see my sister Janice, who was the spitting image of my mother. And so we celebrate them, we recognize them, and Gary, we celebrate your mom's birthday today and what she did and, and the person she was to all of us. And uh, we celebrate our mother, our, our, our Medea, who is in heaven. She would have been 90 years old this month. So anyway, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with me, Gary, and for reminding me. So we understand that that word, we're talking about the word kail, that it means warrior, it means wealth, and it means wisdom. And so we were defining what the elements of warfare. And so scripture tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to pull down strongholds. So looking at everything that we have to contend with, there are levels of engagement that we have to learn to contend from. Now, there are a lot of people who who are fighting they're trying to fight spiritual battles battles that are rooted in the spirit they're trying to deal with them and manage them in the natural and they're not experiencing the level of success and, and I was saying myself included I would love to see more success in some of the battles that I've had and some of the battles that I've that I've been fighting you know for six years and you're going God why is this still going on so in recent months I started, the Lord has led and connected me with some resources that are, that are actually enlarging my understanding of realm warfare. Now, realm warfare means that you are on this earth realm, you're on the earth. And but there is a but there is a whole other realm that you can step into because scripture says that we are bilocated. And so one of the things that I have been learning is with intentionality to change realms where Jesus said he, he is seated in heavenly places and that we are seated in heavenly places with him and that we get to ascend into these different realms. We get to strategically go into kingdom courts. We get to use the principles of engagements we get to use the principles of court entry and we get to take authority over the accuser of the brethren there is a demonic entity whose name is satan whose whole purpose is to engage you as a Kyle kingdom agent in this earth. And his whole purpose is to defeat you at, by whatever means necessary. One of the strategies he uses to defeat and to overcome those who are in the kingdom of God is he gets to accuse you legally of things that are on, of, of things what, that we have done wrong. It could be our own sin. It could be the sin that's on our bloodline. It could be the sin that's in, that's in our family. And so he can rightly accuse us because we many of the things that he accuses us of we've done okay we're guilty but one of the beautiful things about entering the courts of heaven or entering the courtroom of heaven is that you get to go to the court and you say lord judge me judge me lord I, and then you get to also come to a place where you judge yourself you judge yourself so that you don't have to be judged but so you then when you go into the courts of heaven and you allow god to judge you not because of your own righteousness but because of the righteousness that jesus imparted it then removes the layer of sin that separates us that's what the blood of jesus is what separates us from from the sin that would keep us out of the presence of god that would prevent our access now why do you need access? Because in order to activate the warfare, the level of warfare that we are encountering now so that we can successfully overcome the enemy, we can successfully defeat the enemy in the natural, you must be able to come boldly before the throne of grace where you can find the necessary help in the time that you need it. So whatever your battle of your place of engagement, if the place of engagement is with related to your health and you're trying to overcome the COVID virus and you're trying to contend against the Delta variant, well, the word of God has given you specific promises, specific, uh, specific privileges that come with being a part of the kingdom of God. But if you don't know how to engage the, to engage in the spirit, if you don't know how to use the word of God as the gateway, 
pray to pulling the three dimensions of you together. It is the word of God that you engage over. The opposition comes. The attack comes. And even before the attack comes, the ability to learn the principles of engagement and how you can, you can strategically defeat the enemy, the battle, the, the, even before the battle comes, you can learn these principles. But then when the battle comes, the word of God says that the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. The word violent doesn't mean the one who fights, who's always fighting. The word violent means the one who who takes possession, who you just, you, you take possession out of the a law of assumption. When you know who you are, you just step in there. You just go, you just go on in and take it. You don't even, a lot of the things that the enemy does, when you recognize who you are and our identity in Christ, the, the enemy loses his power because you know who you are and you know your legal rights. Okay, when a person does not know their legal rights and they don't know who they are, the enemy can then roll over you. He can then bring a Delta variant or a coronavirus or whatever, whatever the enemy is doing. He will roll over you. He will plow you under because we don't know our legal rights. So the word Kayil is about being a warrior who understands the rules of engagements, who understands that it is the word of God, this holy scripture, this word of God. That that is a gateway that gives you access to utilizing all three dimensions of your being, your spirit man, your soulish man, and your body. And you can use all three of them to engage. And then there's a point when you can access your spirit, just functioning in the spirit. Then there's a point where you can access the spirit and the soul and the spirit and the soul can engage in the kingdom realm. But then there's also a point where your spirit, your soul, and your body can engage in in the kingdom realm and you can change realms and actually step into a whole new realm and God can begin to use you in that new level, which is where not most Christians have never gone. Now I have been, I, I have had encounters in the past that I didn't understand what was happening. I've had encounters where I realized that the first dimension, spirit to spirit, was in operation. And then I've had encounters where the spirit and the soul, my spirit man and my soulish man, had and had an encounter. But then, then I realize now that there were that I have had encounters across my life where my spirit, my soul, and my body were engaged in a different realm where I was actually bilocated and I didn't and when I came out of it I didn't realize that I had transcended time and I had transcended realm that my body my spirit and my mind had stepped into a whole nother location and I thought I was dreaming I wasn't now now in this new level of awareness I get it. I'm understanding what has been happening in my life. Now, here's the beautiful thing about realizing these three dimensions, because this is all scriptural. Let me give you an example. Jesus, when Jesus went to the mountain of transfiguration, he was standing there. He had three of the apostles with him and he was transfigured. He was standing there talking to two ancients. He was talking to some say they believe he was speaking to Elijah and to, to Enoch. And so he's standing there having this conversation. His body is in the realm. His mind is in that realm and his spirit is in that realm. Okay. All three dimensions of him were in that realm and the apostles who were looking on saw it and went, wow. Okay. Now, there was another instance where Jesus was moving through a crowd that wanted to kill him. The crowd had made up their mind that they were going to take Jesus out right then and there. Jesus became invisible. In other words, his physical being transcended a realm. He could, they could not see him and he passed and moved through the crowd. So his mind, his spirit and his body switched realms so that in the natural they couldn't see him. Now, let me let you, what I'm, what I'm saying is, is that at this level of engagement with all of the attacks and the level of the attacks and the escalation of the attacks, good morning, Gloria, good morning, Rosa, thank you guys for being on here with me, with the escalation of the attacks that are coming at the kingdom of God, it is no longer good enough for you to just function in the spirit to spirit realm. Because it leaves your soul and your body out of the loop. 
okay? And there are things that God needs to use you and I for that require the engagement of the spirit, the engagement of the soul, and the engagement of your body. And the first way you possess this new level of warfare is you have to believe that God wants you to move and function at that level. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so if God is saying, look, I need more warriors who will just believe that if the moment comes when I need to move your spirit, soul, and body out of your present location and put you somewhere else, if you don't even believe that God can use you to do that, he can't use you. If God needs to use you to step in, here's a story that I, that I was re re reading recently out of a really powerful book. And I'm studying this book chapter by chapter. It's called Realms. And it's by Ian Clayton. And Ian was talking about one of the first times that, he's, that he was actually bilocated and went into another, into another realm. And he said that he was in his room and then all of a sudden he saw himself in a jail cell. And there was a man in the jail cell who had been brutally beaten. His body was bones. His, his face was battered. His body was broken. He was beaten to, uh, just to a pulp. And Ian said, the man looked at him and said, he says, did you come? The man asked him did you come to take me to heaven and Ian said no I came a heaven sent me to help you and so he said he looked at his body and so Ian said the first thing that he thought was to touch him and so when he touched his body he said he touched his foot he said like a like an x-ray machine the healing power of God went to move over this man's body from the tip of his toe to his all the way to his head and healed every broken bone in his body everything that had transpired Inspired in his body with this, where he was in this jail cell. And then the man began to rejoice and praise God. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. And then Ian said he heard footsteps running down the hallway and he heard a little window door open. And then the, uh, a person peeped in the room and stuck a gun in the room. And Ian says, God, get me out of here. And in an instant, he was back in his room. He was back where he was supposed to be. Okay. And then he heard the gunfire into that jail cell. Now that is an example of being bilocated, transfigured, and moved from one location by the glory and the power of God. And God doesn't want this to just be restricted for a limited few. He wants all of us to begin to understand that as Kyle warriors, C-H-A-Y-I-L, that word warriors, he wants us to begin to function, operate, and to move at this level. And it's not something that's just going to happen by accident. It is something that must be, that must be cultivated with intentionality. Now, on a personal level, when I was a young adult, probably in my early, I, 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 was, I was probably in my late teens when this happened to me, but I was in my room praying. I had just really given my life to the Lord. And in my room, I'm just praying, meditating on the things of God. And all of a sudden, I see a metal wash tub, like one of the old wash tubs. They were about this deep and they were about this big around. And this wash tub. And I saw somebody take a baby. It was a little white baby, a little Caucasian baby, beautiful baby. The baby looked like he might be about five or six months old. He was just, a, and the ba little, little, little pretty naked baby, just a pretty little baby. And somebody had this wash tub full of water and they took the baby and they put the, and I'm standing in this room now. I'm watching this. I'm watching this person take this baby and put this baby under water. Now the room was dark. It, well, it did not look like modern times. It didn't look like it was in the era that I was living in. It looked like it, it looked, it looked like something around World War II. So I'm, I'm just describing, I'm just telling you what I saw. So they put the baby in the wash tub and they press the baby under the water as if they're trying to drown the baby. And I remember thinking to the baby, breathe. And as the baby starts to breathe this water, I'm watching this going, the baby just starts to breathe the water. Breathe the water. And then the, per the hand that was holding the baby under began to shake because the baby wasn't drowning. And so then they take their hands off. The baby pops up. The baby just kind of bobbles around the top of the water. You know how baby looks when you got him in the pool. Baby looked happy. He looked, looked, the baby looked so full of joy, so joyful. And then the person took the baby and pushed him back under. And the baby did it again. He started to breathe the water. And then by this time, the person that had the baby wouldn't die. And I remember thinking to the baby, you will live. You will live. You will live. 
And so I'm just looking as I'm, I'm looking. And then, then finally the person takes the baby out of the water and they walk out of the room. And in an instance, I'm back in my room. What I know now that I did, I never, I wouldn't tell people that I was having these kind of, that, that this stuff was happening because I thought people would think I was crazy. Now I understand that I was bilocated and that more than likely I had stepped in there in God. There is no distance or time. God will use whoever is available. And in that season of my life, I had just gotten filled with the Holy Ghost. I was starting to pray in other tongues on a consistent basis. I was reaching in. I was working to, to build my relationship with God, to connect with God. And so what I'm saying to us today, that with the level of warfare that we are encountering, it is no longer acceptable. It is no longer feasible to just engage with the spirit part of you to say you know they that worship god must worship him in spirit is in truth and oh you're just singing in the spirit and all hell is breaking loose around us and we're just like unoccupied and we're not walking in the level of authority and in a level of 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 accountability that God needs us as the body of Christ as kingdom agents he needs us to ascend to we must move at this different level now what i am also learning is that there are levels of engagements when we're talking about the engagements where you can step into you can you can step into your authority in this just the spirit the spirit component but then there are points where you can step in and you can begin to engage in realms with the spirit and the soul that's where your mind and your mental faculties begin to come under the influence of the spirit man and god begins to show us things by the spirit you, your mental faculties begin to tap into and so what happened to me as a young adult in that example my mental faculties were tapping into the spirit component of me and then the mental Mental faculties and the spirit drew my body into a setting. Okay, that's what happened. Now, this has happened to most believers, especially spirit filled believers, in many instances have encountered these types of experiences and not realized what they were or discounted it as an overactive imagination. Not realizing that the six faculties of your mind, when they are brought under the influence of the Spirit of God, are, are tools for accessing different realms. Your imagination can be sanctified sanctified and then used for God to give you snapshots and images of what he wants to release in the earth realm through you. But if you, if a person doesn't even believe that that God can use them that way, if they don't even believe that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the same spirit that allowed Jesus to move through a crowd, unifying the spirit, the soul and the body, Jesus's spirit, soul and body were all synchronized that allowed him to move through a crowd that was endeavoring to kill him. And so we, the same thing, the word of God says that what the same things that Jesus did, that we should also, the works that he did, we should also do. So there are things God needs believers, people in the earth realm now who are willing to step into this level of faith and accountability so that God can use you to function at these higher levels. And then you will become a more strategic believer. Imagine a scenario, for example, that if in the same way that the demonic realm, that in the same way that Ian stepped into that cell and he touched that man's body and healed that man, there are people. What if, what if, what if, just imagine like a school board meeting, for example, where you can move. Now, I know you guys have seen this in the, you've seen this in the movies where you have like shapeshifters and a shapeshifter will walk into a room and they'll speak into a person's mind and all of a sudden this person gets a thought. And so this person has this thought. So now all of a sudden they say, no, let's not do that. Let's do this. 
What if God uses believers in similar ways? You got a school board meeting, you got a people, and then you just have, just, God just uses a person or a spirit or an angel in that realm to begin to go through and to speak a word of life, a word of truth, a word of wisdom, a word of whatever the word and the word to break and activate the kingdom in that moment compared to the word from the voice of the enemy to activate death and destruction. But for example, like like, like like putting a pathogen in the body of a child and calling it a health benefit, knowing that in future years that pathogen could sterilize the child, could cause their heart cavity to swell, could knowing that this stuff could happen. And so you have someone who was in it, you have, so God puts a secret agent in an atmosphere to go around and just begin to release a word of truth. Then you say, there are better ways. There are better ways. There are alternate strategies. There are ways to accomplish this with that. And you just have this, this person just going around saying there are ways that you can do. And so all of a sudden somebody says, well, you know, there are some better ways. They say it out loud. And then all of a sudden the atmosphere shifts because a new truth has been introduced into that realm. And because that truth is released, a whole new level of possibility happens. Now you think that's an example. Let me tell you of a setting where that scenario actually occurred. In 2019, I was working with an associate in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We were trying to set up one of my programs, the Customer Service Academy uh, in Pittsburgh. Miserable failure. Did not happen. Just totally, just, I was, I mean, I was bummed for a long time. But before that event happened, when I arrived in Pittsburgh working on this project, I thought that I was going to Pittsburgh to set up a customer service academy. The week before we were supposed to start working on this project, there was a school board meeting and the pastor of the, of the church that wanted to, that was sponsoring the academy, that was supporting us, that helped bring us to town, the pastor, his name, uh, Daryl Kennedy, and this was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Pastor Kennedy had wanted to start a school for African, a charter school for African American boys in particular, because the school district had a 90, as in nine zero percent failure rate for African American boys in terms of 90 percent of the African American boys in that school district were fault were, were dropping out of school were just they were just complete and they were and, they, and nobody was doing anything about it so here I am I show up in Pittsburgh on a Saturday I get invited to a, so I get a text message and I'm invited to come to this school school board meeting on a Tuesday and I'm going what am I doing here what am I doing here what am I doing here I'm just I mean I'm like this is I'm thinking this is not my this is not I, I had no idea that God uses multiple he'll use you you think you're doing one thing and he's got you a whole nother assignment I thought I was setting up a customer service academy which totally flopped, fell apart, never happened. And then I show up at the school board meeting going, why am I here? And then they tell me, we, oh, we want you to take two minutes. And I'm going, okay, what am I going to say, Holy Spirit? And right then the Holy Spirit dropped into my, literally he dropped into my head exactly what to say. Now this school board was voting that night on whether there would be a charter school for African American males and whether Pastor Kennedy would have the opportunity to launch this school for those boys. The word on the street was that the vote was seven to one against okay seven to one and that they had already made up their mind that they were going to say no and so i show up not real now remember in the kingdom of god there are angels assigned to all of us so when you show up when i showed up at that school board meeting not only was i there but all of the angels that accompany my life all the angels i have one angel called big mo that is the angel that i know of i have not seen him yet but i see 
sense him all the time. So when I showed up, Big Mo, my angel, showed up with me along with all of the others. There are many angels that follow my life because I am constantly releasing angels and giving them assignments. Every day, I'm sending angels into assignments constantly. Why? Because if I don't, if you're not giving your angels something to do, somebody got to get these unemployed angels some assignments so that they can be working while they, there's too much that needs to be done. And we need the support of the angelic realm. And so I show up and my angels show up. And in that moment when I said, Lord, what do I say? God dropped into my spirit exactly what to say. I stood up. I spoke my, sp my presentation with such clarity and precision. And the anointing was so, it was there. And when I finished speaking, under, I, had, I had time left over on my tour. There, you could hear a whole, the whole room went, whoa. That night, now I, it wasn't just me, I wasn't the only one, but I do know that the fact that God brought me from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, all the way to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, that there was something unique on my life that he wanted me to introduce into that environment. That doesn't make me special. It just makes me a tool that God could use in that moment that God sent. And that night they voted seven to one in favor of Pastor Kennedy's school. Now, that's an example of what happens when God uses spirit, soul, and body. He synchronizes you. He takes you to places. Some places people may know you're there. In some instances, they're not. When I was there for that baby, nobody saw me. But I, I saw the baby. I saw the person. I didn't see the individual. I saw the person that was trying to drown that baby. I saw the shadow of that patient person when they took the baby out of the water and they ran out of the room. I believe to this day that that baby is on this planet and walking this earth because I stood in the gap for that baby. Now, I don't know that. I will know in part I know now, but when I get on the other side and I'm in heaven and I'm in the kingdom realm, it's a lot of stuff that I have wondered about. God, I'll understand it better by and by. Now I understand what was happening in that realm. Now I understand that God didn't, I thought I was going to Pittsburgh to go and to help start, wanted to launch, you know, the customer service academy and realizing God said, no, I got a bigger reason. I have a bigger agenda. I was going, I went to Pittsburgh to help activate the environment so that that charter school, which would save African-American boys in that community, could be launched. Well, what is assigned to you? What, is God, what does God have for your life? What does he want you to step into? What, what rules of engagement do you need to activate unifying your spirit man, your soul, and your body? How, what, uh, do you dare believe that God can use you and bilocate you? Do you, would, uh, would you dare believe that God can allow you to transfer your body from one place to another place to be used by him? Would you dare even believe, say, God, would you even consider the notion? <clears throat> would you even consider it? And so I'm here to introduce these concepts and say, as a Kayil warrior, C-H-A-Y-I-L, the first meaning of that word is warrior. And the word of God says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not limited to the mental realm. They're not limited to this fleshly body. They're not limited to this earthbound flesh place where we're in. We are multidimensional and we must learn to allow the spirit man to be in ascendancy so that the spirit can pull the soul and the body into the other realm where all of the control is. When you step out of this realm and you step into the spirit realm, now I'm learning that even when I'm working on projects and I've, I've, I've I mean, I was, I mean, I, this past month, you know, the Lord challenged me a project, something that had been in my heart to do for more than five years. And the Lord said to me, how long are you going to whine and cry over that? When are you just going to believe me to get it done? And so I started to step into the spirit room. I started to in, pray in a way, asking the Holy spirit for divine insight. And in that realm, I got a solution, a divine solution that allowed me to finish that project in four weeks which I have been trying to do it for years. It is done. It is finished. 
And so now I'm looking. So when I, when I, uh, yesterday I was, I was watching the whole, uh, some of the, the Mike Lindell, uh, presentation about what had transpired back last November. And I, and, and, and I was looking at the attack that has been launched against them, but I'm just saying, I don't want to just pray. Oh God, help them. No, 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 that is no longer good enough. I want to know, God, how can I partner with you, bringing my spirit, my soul, and my body into harmony with the purposes of the kingdom, switching realms and stepping over into the spirit where I can do something that really makes stuff happen. And we really bring down this cabal that is endeavoring to shift and change times and seasons, that is endeavoring to alter the plans in the earth that God has established so that they can short circuit the, the necessary revival, which must come before Jesus comes to take his church away. We have a window. We have a short window. And so for those who are in our community and not just those who are in the Facebook group, for those who are in the community, we have an online community called the Cayo Circle. It is actually a whole other location where we can communicate, we can chat, we can do classes, we can do workshops. It's already online. I put it together. And so one of the things God has been challenging me to do is he's been challenging me to engage in the spirit realm, to go into that realm and to get an image of what God wants to do in that group. So one of the things I've been doing is I stopped trying to do stuff myself. And I'm just saying, Lord, I'm just going to wait. You show me, show me what you want me to teach. Show me what you want me to say. Show me what you want me to release into this earth so that it can be more effective. I'm through doing stuff that do I'm just done doing things that don't have any results. I want results. I want to see outcomes and I am pursuing God to see outcomes that change things and bring into agreement in this earth realm, the purposes and the plans of God. That's what I'm after. And I know that I'm not the only one. Miss Beverly, I know I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one, Miss Rosa. I'm not the only one, Gloria. There are more of us who are willing to step into these realms, who are willing to engage with God at these levels, who are willing to start doing things, allowing God to use you in totally different ways, exercising the kingdom authority, and walking in the rights and privileges that a kingdom agent possesses. Yeah, there's a lot to learn. But by the, grace of the, by the grace of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that's the first word. That's the first meaning of the, the word kail. It means warrior. It means wealth. It means wisdom. Warrior, wealth, wisdom. But not just warrior in terms of, oh, we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost and take authority over the enemy. We bind the devil. We bind the devil. We... No, 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 no. I want to know what exists in heaven that I can step into that realm and bring into the earth. I know what's down here. I know what needs to be bound. What I don't know is what is God wanting to release? What does he have at his disposal in heaven that he is trying to put in my hands? So it will also be at my disposal. And if I am seated in heavenly places with Christ, I am, I'm supposed to have access to God. I can come boldly before the throne of grace where I can find that means that there are things in that realm that are waiting for me to find them. That are waiting for me to discover them. That are waiting for me to access them. And then I can bring those things into this realm and get some help. That's what I'm after. That's what I'm going for. That's what I'm pursuing. That's what I'm pursuing. And I want to do, I, when I pray for people like Michael and Dell, I want to pray knowing that we are sending real strategic help. That yeah, when, 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 when I pray, I want to know that I know that I know bondages are broken and new pathways of access to the heavenly realms are opening. 
and the help that they need to do what needs to be done is happening. And if Jesus said in Matthew 13, 30, he says that the tares would be bound. I am engaging with Jesus. Jesus said the tares would be bound. Who are the tares? So when I look at people like Cuomo, who's stepping down, that's a tear. That's a tear. Jesus said that he would send his angels, his reapers into the earth to bind the tares. And that's the demonic entities operating behind these people. And so I am praying and agreeing with Jesus that the tares operating behind Nancy Pelosi, the tares operating behind George Soros, the tares operating behind the cabal, the tares operating behind the Illuminati, all of those demonic entities that have held this earth in its clutch, they must be bound, they must be tied, and they must be removed so that the harvest can take place. I am praying and strategically asking God to show us how can we engage with the heavenly realm and see the CCP brought down so that the people in that country have access to the truth of the gospel. That that nation has freedom to receive the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ uninhibited before Jesus comes. That's my prayer. My prayer is that every person in the nation of China has access to the truth of the gospel so that they can make a decision for Christ freely, uninhibited by the darkness of communism. And there is a way for that to happen. And for those of us who are hungry, who are thirsty, who are after it, He's going to show us. He's showing us. He's revealing us to this truth. He's introducing these concepts. And we're getting it. We're getting it. <laughs> and I hope you'll join us. Well, I'm out of time. That's, that's enough. I've said what I felt like the Lord gave me today. So, Kail, warrior, wealth, and the wisdom of God. Warrior, wealth, wisdom. And warrior is not just praying in the Holy Ghost, taking authority. There is a whole level of supernatural engagement that God wants you to step into. It, you can see it in examples all throughout scriptures. You see it in examples. You see uh, Elijah running next to a chariot with supernatural rate running ability. You see it where uh, you see it where. Uh, where Jesus moved through the crowd and they couldn't see him. You see it where Philip was standing in one city and then the next thing he's standing talking to uh, the, 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 uh, the eunuch and then he gets off the, he's, he asks him, have you, have you received this Holy Spirit since you believe? And he goes, I've never even heard of this Holy And so he gets off the, he gets off the, track, the, the wagon or whatever they were riding. He gets down to the river, baptizes him, and then in an instant he was translated and in another city. You hear Paul saying it all the time. I, whether I was in the spirit, I don't know whether I was in, was, I don't know if it was a dream. I don't know if it was a vision. I don't know. All I know is I saw this. And so God is showing us things because he needs us to see and hear. He needs us to taste to smell. He needs us to use all of our faculties. Each of your faculties, your sight, your cell, your senses has a spiritual parallel. And so we are learning to use all of those faculties to engage with the spirit realm so that we can activate the power of God necessary to accomplish God's objectives in this hour. He needs you, Kaiyo warrior. He needs you. Kyle soldier. He needs you. Kyle agent. He needs you. Kingdom warrior. He needs you. He needs you. He needs you to enlist at this level. He needs you to believe that he can use you in these ways. Because until you believe it, it's pointless even knowing it. But once you know, now you know. Those of you who've seen this, now you know. God is, it's an, the fact that you watch this video this morning is letting you know that God is inviting you to say, I want you to start engaging with me at this level. 
And this is what you need to do to get there. There you go. Well, thank you guys for being on here with me. Remember, for those who want to order our Kayo caps, uh, this is just something God put in my heart to do. Uh, one, because I just got tired of just having ideas and needing to get this word out. And then I got to go do all of this stuff to get ready to do a video. And God says, no, act like a coach, a Kayo coach. <laughs> so call me Kayo coach. But that's where we're going. That's where we're going. And I'm excited about it. Come with us. Won't you come alongside us? Come on with us. <laughs> I love you guys. Well, that's all I got for today. If you want to order your cap, cap, remember, they'll be on our website later today. This is Stella saying thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, you make it a terrific day. Bye-bye. <laughs>